Hello and um, welcome to the final video for, to help you with uh, numerical methods coursework. Um, this video is going to be on the final method, which is the newton ratson method. Um, probably the most powerful method. Um, it's usually the quickest method. Um, but it does require a bit of explanation. And I'm going to go through what you need to do in order to get, to get the marks. Um, so, we can deal with this equation again. Now, the important thing in the coursework to note is that for each method, you have to use a different equation. Okay, so for each method, you have to use a different equation. Okay, it's really important that, that you do that, and I'm going to highlight that. For each method, you use a different equation. I've done it with the same one because for the final part of the coursework, um, you're going to be doing um, talking about comparisons, and so I can you can compare them quite easily if I just do it with one equation. But you're going to it's really important that for each method you have to use a different equation. Okay, so x to the power of five minus five x plus three. We want to find um, the root to this. We want to find one of the roots of this equation using the newton ratson method. Now, I'm going to explain how this works graphically. And then we'll explain how it works um, algebraically and actually. So we get up our course um, GeoGebra file. Here is the graph. Um, we're going to try and find the root that we tried to find before, which is that root there. Now, the way this works is you take a starting value. Now, in this case, we may as well take, um, well, we'll take the starting value as minus 1.5 there. Oh, we'll set, we'll set, no, we'll set, take it as minus 1, okay, because the root is near minus 1. Now, well, the, the way this method works is we, get, we take a point on the line, so I'll just put a new point on that line, put it on the curve, and we'll get it for when object properties um, show, I can get the value on so I can know when it's, there we go, minus 1, 7. Okay, there's the graph there. Now, the idea is, if we take a line segment, we start from our minus 1, we go up to, to the graph, then we take a tangent, okay, and we can actually do this, we can take um, a tangent, so select a point, we can select the tangent of the graph at that point, okay. Now, this minus 1 is a poor choice, what we've done, because our next approximation is going to be where the tangent crosses the x-axis. Now you can see here, because at minus 1 we've got a stationary point, the, great, the tangent is going to be um, horizontal, completely horizontal. This tangent is never going to cross the x-axis, so it was, minus 1 was a poor choice of starting value. So let's change it to minus 1.5. Okay, so let's get that down to at the point there, minus 1.5 is a bit fiddly, minus 1.5. So, I get a point there, I'm going to type in a point here, so A, and I want minus 1.5, 0, um, that's gone, so let's get the algebra view, let's get B, let's get C, equals minus 1.5, 0. Okay, there's our C. What we're going to do is we're going to take a point from there to the point on the curve, and then we're going to take a tangent of that point and that curve, and we're going to get a better approximation. Now, it's quite difficult to see this, so I'm going to change the scale. We can change the scale. Um, let's, let's get on the line there. Change the scale, go to x, y axis. Now, we want it. No, the other way. So, right click, go to x axis, y axis. And right, you can see it a little bit better here, and I'm going to zoom in. And I might even decide to go a little bit further. I might go 1 to 10 there, so we can really see it. I'm going to go even further. Ch just changing the scale. No, I've gone too far. Perfect. Now, what we do here 
Now, bear in mind that this is the curve. We pick a point close to the root. This is the root here. We go up to the point, and then we take the tangent at that point. Now, the tangent here crosses the x-axis, intersect points, crosses the x-axis there. Now, this is far closer to our root than our previous um, approximation of minus 1.5. Okay, this is how the newton raphson method works. We take a point up to the graph, take the tangent, where the tangent crosses the x-axis is our new approximation. Okay, so now I need to, to do the next iteration. Um, I go down to the curve again. There we go. And I'm going to take the tangent at that point. And you can see here that it's, if you zoom in, we're getting even closer. Really, there we go. Look, there's our line, and there's our root. Look, we're very close. So after two iterations, we're incredibly close to that. Um, we're incredibly close to that that, that root. Okay. Now to show this graphically, which you need to do in the the coursework, you have to do it at least twice. Okay. You have to show this graphically at least twice. So what I've done here, I've shown it twice. Um, you might want to print screen some of this. Um, you might want to color some of the tangents as opposed to the graphs. Um, so they're the tangents. Um, I'm going to go to object properties and go make that blue. Um, let's make the graph a different color as well. Let's make that green. Okay, you can then zoom out. You can see what we've done here is graph is green, we pick a point near the, the root, go up to the graph, then we get the blue tangent. Where the blue tangent crosses the x-axis is our new approximation for the root. So from there we go to the graph, then draw another tangent, in this case the red, and we get even closer. That's how you need to demonstrate that graphically and you need to explain that as well. To do it algebraically, and to, well, algebraically, to do it numerically with using Excel, we need, the, there's a formula which will do this for us, okay, rather than relying on the graph. And the formula is, it's an iterative sequence. The formula is that x, in fact, let's get a super subscript there. The next approximation, x to the n plus 1, is equal to the previous approximation, minus fraction there. The function, the previous approximation, the value of the function divided by the value of the gradient function. Okay, now you can prove this. It's not necessary for the coursework, but you can prove this. It's a bit of, um, a bit of an algebra. It isn't a massively elegant proof, but um, still worthwhile proof. So this is our newton raphson formula, and we're going to use this formula to use and in conjunction with Excel to get an approximation for the root, okay, um, for this particular equation. So there are basically two elements, three elements to this equation. We've got the previous value, the function, the value of the function at the previous value, and the value of the gradient function at the previous value. Okay. Now the function here is, let's get the equation down, f of x is equal to x to the 5 minus 5x minus 5x plus 3. Now, unlike the rear, this is an iterative formula, just like the um, rearrangement method where we plug a value in to get a new value, then we use that new value to get um, another new value. But this, we don't have to do any rearrangement because um, we've got the function there. All we need now is the gradient function. Okay, so if I get the gradient function, f dashed x, in this case, is going to be 5x to the power of 4 minus 5. Okay, now summing these, these two things into our formula gives us our particular newton raphson formula, and we can keep a lot of it because um, the... The numerator is going to be x to the 5. Well, let's just let's be a bit careful here. Get these scripts here. 
x to n to the power of 5 minus 5. Oh, I've lost it. Let's get, make it quite so big here. 5n plus 3. All over the gradient function, which is 5. And we have one of them. x to n to the 4 minus 5. I'm going to make that a little bit smaller so you can all see. Right, so this is our newton ratson formula, okay, for this particular equation. Now, this is a bit fiddly on Excel, I'm not going to lie to you, but we can still, we can still do it with a bit of care. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to copy and paste that, I'm going to copy of Excel, just so we've got a clear basis of what we're dealing with here. Now we can do the same as we, what we did for the rearrangement. I'm going to have my n and I'm going to have my x, put underscore n there, um, xn. You can play around that to make that look a lot nice. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So this is our step value. Um, now, our first value was minus 1.5. Okay, that was our first value because we can, from the graph, we made our first value minus 1.5. Um, now, our next value is going to be the previous value. That's that xn. Subtract. Now, this is where I go mega on the brackets. Now, my first set of brackets is going to be for the entire function. My second set of brackets is going to be for the numerator. So, it is x to the 5. So, I'm going to have brackets for that as well. Close brackets. So, the purple ones for the x to the 5 minus... I'm going to have some purple ones again, 5x, close brackets, plus 3, close brackets. So the green ones, if you notice they're, they're different colours, the green ones represent the denominator, the numerator. Now we're going to do the denominator, so these will be green as well. So first of all we have that 5 times, um, now I need to go to another colour here, just to be really, oh, x to the power of 4. I'll tell you what I've done, I've just written x, haven't I? I've just written x there, that's a mistake, it should just be that, I've just literally, it should, you can't reference to x, it has to be referenced in a cell. Um, minus 5, close brackets, oh no, so that should be the purple, minus 5, close brackets, now that's the green numerator done, that's the black fraction done, and there we have our next value done, okay? Now I can drag this down, and it's all looking lovely jubbly, um, let's you can drag this down even more. And you can see here, for these, are, this is five significant figures, that after five iterations, we have our value of x to be... Um, oh, sorry. No, this is... Let's have a look. Get rid of that, actually. Um, if we round these to, to five significant figures, so if we just go like that, just... Uh, well, we can see it's actually after them. After four iterations, our value is x is equal to minus 1.618 oh, to five significant figures. Okay, and this has taken us four iterations get x is minus 1.618 to 5 significant figures. So we've found that root. We've found a particular root. So it's a green graph. We've found that particular root of um, this graph. Now, for all of the marks in this, it, you have to find all of the roots. Now, this doesn't become a problem because here we've got two roots near 1. We've got one near 0 and one between 1 and 2. Um, all we need to do now to find the other ones is just to change our starting value. So I'm going to change my starting value to zero there. So if I change my starting value to zero, you can see here, get rid of that because that isn't necessarily the case, no fail. Um, to five significant figures, we've got another root as x is equal to 0 0.618. O 
five significant figures. And how long did that take? Well, it also took four iterations. Okay, to get there. Okay, four, iter four iterations to get there, which is great. Um, we can change it to one, and oh, we get a problem. It says div, div by zero. Now you can explain this because in this function here, there's a fraction. Now the denominator at this point is five lots of x to the four minus five. Now five lots of one to the power of four minus five is zero. So we get x minus something divided by zero. Excel can't handle it because it's, you're dividing by zero. So here the method fails. Um, and if we look at the graph, that's because the value at x equals 1 is a um, stationary point. So the tangent is never going to cross. Um, if we get the tangent at the point in the function, no, no. Okay, no, I don't need a point, first of all. Let's get a point there. Um, if we get a tangent, oh no, I think I've got one of them. Yeah, get a tangent. You can see there that the tangent never crosses the x-axis, so we've got a problem here. And this is what you're going to do to demonstrate failure. You're going to pick a starting value where it gives you a stationary point, which means that the gradient is the gradient function is zero, which means we get nasty divs by zero. And graphically, it shows that we've got um, a tangent which is parallel to the x-axis, i.e., it's tangent at a stationary point. The gradient is zero, which will never cross. Okay, so clearly one was a bad choice um, of my starting value, um, and you actually have to demonstrate an example of that in the um, coursework. So let me pick the value of two, and right, well this isn't doing it as quickly by the looks of things, but we can still go down. Let's go down. Oh, no, there we go. There we go. There we go. Where's it? We want to five significant figures, so it's going to be after the sixth there. Okay, both those values round up to 1.2757 to five significant figures. So that took six iterations. Okay, so we've found all of the roots, and for um, the coursework for the Newton Raphson method only, you have to find all of the roots. Okay, all of the roots to the equation. So there we have it. There we have um, the, th the three methods. Remember, you need to demonstrate each method graphically. Um, you need to use a different equation for both of them. And for the newton raphson you need to find all of the roots. Okay, you need to find all of the roots. And you also need for each method to demonstrate a failure graphically and explain it using words. Okay, so that's it. They're the three methods. Um, it's up to you now. Enjoy.